of uh, pastors, and uh, we were supposed to have a big singer coming, and this big singer would uh, bring the people in, and this would help us pay the, the venue because it's very expensive in France. You know, it was the the the, the overall budget was was six hundred thousand dollars for one crusade. It's, it's uh, uh, no, maybe nine hundred thousand dollars for one crusade. So can you imagine it's something? You know, and uh, and uh, so when they saw that uh, this guy at the the last time he resigned, and we could not have this income coming in they had a secret meeting that we've been told that and that they decided not to support any longer and they said we will come ourselves as pastors but we won't uh, tell the church to come we'll tell them not to come because if there is a problem we don't want to be in this problem so that's what they did mm. so the stadium was really less packed than it was supposed to and uh, and then uh, and not only, not only that but there, there was a spiritual welfare and the first offering people gave an average of 26 cents per person uh, because you know I'm an economist, so not an, I study the economy, so I, I do statistics all the time. You know, uh, so so yeah. uh, when I saw that, I had a, I had a shock, and uh, so so I had that, and then uh, the offerings were not coming, and the uh, and the participation didn't come, and then on top of that, one big businessman came, and uh, he, he 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 didn't uh, he bought himself a new uh, uh, X6 uh, BMW, and he showed to everybody, even Luis Palau saw it, and and Claudio Freyson, and we congratulate him. And I was so happy because I said, if this guy had this money, I'm sure he would pay half for the stadium because I paid half for the stadium first, but he was supposed to, to do that. If not, I would not, not have done that. But he, he left before the end of the crusade and didn't pay anything, not, not even the, 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 the special lunch we, lunch on we had with the, the fundraising lunch, lunch on we had where he promised in front of everybody. So it was horrible. And then at the end, we had a committee, and, they, and we, had, we asked the people, would you, would you please tell the people and do a, a, a call everywhere? Uh, maybe that's so that everybody could give 10, 10, 10 euros, you know, to, to help us and something like that. And then they said, hey, do you, do, do you realize that uh, people are going to holidays nights, the end of June, and we don't want to bother people? And also you need to know that we don't want to encourage you to come in Paris in, because you are there in the, in the in, you, you are far from there. And if you come here, many people will come to in your church and we don't want to encourage you. So now it's you, you want it, it's your vision and everything. And then they put everything on my on, on my back. So it was absolutely horrible when I tell you half a million dollars yeah. is the minimum. All was blocked. And uh, so the first thing we did, we sold our car and then and then for we decided that we would pay till the end of our life if we have to, and we are still paying that. We are living with uh, just um, you know because uh, I, I I had a blessed life. I I had a wonder a mansion. You know I was blessed because uh, well I knew how to do money or whatever. You know I I was doing some business too. But then we lost everything. And then because of fear, people started not only to abandon us, but then they tried, they started to put uh, so many lies on internet. And uh, this, uh, the, the, the top of that was uh, uh, in 2000, um, end of, uh, 2011, I guess, where uh, they put some, uh, some, some uh, press people uh, heard about some things like that, and they, they called people without doing any inquiry, and they started to gather all false testimonies, and they called my family and my wife's family. They tried to have us divorce and everything, saying that I was full just because I didn't want to do foreclosure. And they said, but the law is telling you to do foreclosure, Pastor Freddy, because, because this is the law. You didn't, you didn't uh, uh, achieve that, so the law says, okay, you stop it. But I told them, no. No, because the, the strength of a pastor, the authority, the spiritual authority that we have is our words. How uh, a person who is 60 years old, who invested in this crusade, uh, the economy that she did for years, working for years, and I come to see, oh, oh, my poor lady, you know what, and people didn't pay me. I cannot give you the money that you had aside for your retirement and uh, that you, you, you so nicely gave to your pastor. I said, we cannot do that. We are pastors, and we have to be responsible. So 
so uh, the, the the trials kept kept on. I was uh, we were insulted, and sometimes I was shocked like that. My wife was crying day and night, and then we had the people coming and then wanting to pick up everything. We would put the dolls of the kids and uh, and their bikes in the uh, hidden in the in the woods, you know, so that for the minimum they would have that. And uh, we tried to solve everything we could, but but thing after thing after thing after thing, we decided to pay, and at the same time we had to forgive every day. And to forgive myself too, because obviously you did mistake. You know, we were not perfect, and maybe I didn't calculate everything perfectly and everything. So we've lived uh, this big betrayal, and that lasted not only one day, not only one month, not only one year, but several years. Then uh, wow. many times I cried out, "Heli, heli, lama savartani, heli, heli, lama savartani," and it was so hard. But we decided that, and then I. I was praying, and sometimes I didn't have any word to pray, and sometimes I was doubting the Lord, why did he do that to me? Because I didn't go to the prostitute, I didn't know, go to gamble and to lose the money of people. I was trying to be righteous, and then the righteous is being slaughtered, and the righteous is being... And then it was very hard. So God tried my heart for, for, for many months, because, and then I realized how deep... You can be great. How deep sometimes you can be. You can be strong with people without thinking you are. How deep the being broken like that uh, was is necessary because you can go and you can you you you, you learn to wait for deliverance. And then little by little, God try start, started to send something. For example, one banker, in spite of uh, uh, getting rid of my of my house, he allowed us for two years. We didn't pay the loan for two years. Yet he didn't put, he, he didn't foreclose the house. This was a miracle, and now he's telling me, Pastor Freddy, this month you need to pay something. So now I have three days, and then I need to pay this loan again. I'm praying for that, you know. But uh, for still, then we still have this, and we lost some, but not everything. And God, and God has been very, very faithful. But one thing I know is that now, when God called me back to Word of Grace Ministry, now I have so many people who want to help us because they know one thing: that when we say something, we are after our words, you know, and uh, it's been hard, but uh, I was telling that nobody would ever invest in a, in a crusade if, uh, if I don't pay the, this one, you know, and uh, now we've done uh, almost everything, and uh, God is calling us back, and I know that we will have many supporters, and it was a big warfare, and God was testing my heart, testing my righteousness, and I am not righteous because nobody can think about himself as righteous, but I'm praying God to try to be every day, you know, and to try to be after his word. So it's been very hard. My ministry has been successful, and you described maybe you exaggerated a bit uh, in describing so nice things uh, for a mere <laughs> servant of God and uh, someone who has even not a good accent speaking English or whatever. Um, oh, you know, you should have spoken. No exaggeration, uh, no, Pastor like you are, like you, Yeah, yeah. But, like, I you mean, said, though, the, like you said, you have to practice humility. So uh, what, the, what does the Bible say? Let uh, others speak well of you. So I'm speaking well of you. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, we, yeah, thank you, but it's not so important. The most important is, you know, what we think about Jesus Christ. And he is so wonderful. Yes. So I give him all the glory because having faith has... Uh, was uh, Paul was saying at the end of his life and his ministry, I praise God that I could keep my faith. And I think um, we can say that... This is the first grace when you can go through all these kind of things and many others that I didn't even quote there, and you can still love your Jesus. This is the most important thing, you know. And um, and you realize that God wanted to know if you love the people enough to lo- lose your your life, which is not easy. Yeah. It's, I heard so many people yeah. saying saying, oh, God, one soul uh, is worth all the, the gold of, of the year, yeah, of, the, of the world. Yes, for sure. So what do you want to give to for one soul? So I've been testing on that, and I have a wonderful testimony later on. I will tell you about how God yeah. showed me the value of one soul, you know. So when we started yeah. again, um, World of Grace, yeah. we, we have one motto in World of Grace. is every soul needs a savior. Every soul needs a savior. Yeah. And everywhere you yeah. go on Facebook and everywhere you will see on the Indian faith, and we always tell you guys, every soul needs a savior. And for me, success That's is not true. the pageants I did, the millions of people I could speak. I know I will speak to millions of people in my life because God has given me this promise, but it's not my goal in life. 
My goal mm. is one by one by one by one by one that this one who was suffering has encountered his shepherd, that this one who was in this pit is now risen up and, and now is on the shoulders of the of the master, that the one has been despised like, despised like that and always who is crying alone, one day he has friends again and the first of all of, of the friends is Jesus, his savior and his friend, you know, so I mean Amen. this is the most important thing, let's, let's not see success as men see with the lights and everything, I've done that, I, I had money and I had known, you know, I had uh, very nice cars and I had the, I went uh, each hiking, I did all this, you know, you know what that's not so important. And uh, the most important thing is the success in the eyes of God. And this, I think, comes through obedience. If we could be Amen. obedient, if we could achieve to resist the temptation when it comes to us, and if we could have enough compassion to dedicate our lives for, to others, this is success. Amen. That is so true. You are listening live to Touch Your Heart Talk Show with my special guest, Pastor Freddie DeCoster. If you'd like to call in right now and encourage him or say a, a word or you have a question, please call 347-850-8893, 347-850-8893. And remember, when calling, you must press 1 in order for the producer to connect you through. Please press 1 in order to be connected. Pastor Freddie, you know, you amaze me um, because, yes, everything that we do is for the Lord, but I just, you know, I, I was listening to what you were saying in particular. The thing that really struck out with me is like, no, we cannot do this. If we make a vow, the Bible basically says if we make a vow, it's better to not have made a vow at all than to make one and to break one. And you said we have to do what we committed to do. And I thought that that was so great because it's so so easy to to give up and to say take the easy way out. And you didn't take the easy way out. That that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's it's true that um <clears throat> for me this is one of the things in the ministry. Um many people they are happy to be in the ministry when everything goes well. And we have the laws that allows us to quit what we say. But in the spiritual world, remember what the Bible says, that people were amazed in Mark 1, chapter 1, that Jesus was teaching not like the others that were had known authority, but as having authority. And when he was speaking, something happened. And the Bible says, how do will they believe? And I come from a country where I don't believe. So I tell you, this this one is so important here in this country. It's so easy to believe. And now it's becoming harder, and Christians are having a harder time than before in this history. And now I'm sure the things will change because they will be confronted to the different kind of, of uh, spiritual warfare, you know. But everything is in your world because when you say something, if you have authority, the sickness has to obey you. And if uh, if this is a devil, he has to obey you. If this is doubt, he has to, to obey you one day. So you are the, the 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 goal of the trial, and God uses trial to make sure that we are aligned with what we think and what we believe. Because if not, we are like twisted. We are double-minded, and he cannot even answer our prayers because the. Every, the, the base of faith is that, and, and the answer of prayer is that it is impossible to get to receive an, any answer from our prayers if we don't believe, if we are full of unbelief. So faith is the base, is the key of everything in the kingdom of God. So that's when you are trial, you are you you go through trial that you can test yourself, your motives, your motivation, what you believe, why you believe, why you don't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I mean, one of the things we should uh, recover in our churches and for everyone is that is that we need to say something and do it. And we don't want to do and to say big things because before we're able to do the small things because there the, the devil comes and then he tests you. Oh, like he says to Job, oh, just try him and you will forget all about what you say to about him. It's very easy to hear earlier to say, God, I love you and everything, but try him and you'll see he will curse you. What is a curse is an action from the mouth. 
you know. So, uh, and what the, does the Bible says a man is wise, or a man is able of every good thing once he tamed his tongue. So that's that's the, the harvest ministry that God has with us, is that we see things, we desire things, but we are not after what after our work. That means that we are not decided. And he cannot send a soldier in the battle so harsh if it's not decided. And, um, and there is so many, 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 many other spiritual lessons we can uh, understand just just if we think about okay i say to the people oh it would be good that we have a barbecue together but we never invite these people stop saying it yeah because you're lying yeah. you know yeah, so good. stop saying that's it stop saying, okay when we when we have time it would be good to meet but don't say okay let's meet no if you say let's meet you pursue these people till you did that because you promised it if not you can grieve yeah. someone you can grieve yourself and it's so easy so no it's 